Every pro record has a similar quality to the vocal sound. It's bright, it's polished, you can hear every word that they're saying, it sounds like it's right up close in front of your face, and it's nice and full. Now I'm gonna tell you the one secret, the one thing that creates that pro vocal sound, and chances are it's not what you think, especially if you're anything like me. Like when I started out, I thought it was all about EQ, right? Because you know a lead vocal on a modern, competitive, mainstream record, it's very bright, there's a lot of mid-range. I thought that that was the thing. Now I'm gonna walk you through some examples here as I explain the secret. So here's a lead vocal track that I've got. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my decision. Completely raw, completely dry. There's nothing on it at all right now. So, you know, let's assume that it's EQ. Let's assume that that is the secret, right? We need to make it brighter. We need to give it some more mid-range. So let's pull up an EQ here. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my we'll give it some 8K with a shelf. Let's give it some four and a half but as well. I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. And let's give it some more mid-range, a little lower down. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. So it's sounding a little closer. It's sticking out of the mix. It sounds a bit brighter. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my decision. Still doesn't sound like a modern pro vocal though. So clearly EQ is not the thing. It's not the secret. Now let's keep trying some other things and I'm gonna trace through all of the mistakes that I made, the things that I thought were gonna give me the pro vocal sound. So what about reverb? Maybe it's reverb, right? So let's try that. But I guess if you Vocals really dry sounding now. So let's pull up uh, the Slate reverb plugin. Let's find a preset here. Let's do smooth vocals. Let's try that. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I base my decision. That's a little bit long. Let's try something else. Let's try the CLA verb. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I base my decision. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I base my decision. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I base my now it's tempting to listen to something in solo and hear it with reverb and almost everything is gonna sound better that way. But let's be honest, this still does not sound like a pro vocal even though we've got some ambience around it now. So reverb is not the thing. And honestly, I hardly ever use reverb on a rock mix on the lead vocal anymore. I'm always reaching for delays, almost never reverb on the vocals. All right, well, what about layers? Maybe we just need to stack and double and put harmonies on this vocal. Maybe that's gonna finally bring it all together and make it sound pro. Well, I've got some doubles. I've got some layers here, so let's bring them in. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my decision. So there's a double, and let's bring in a harmony too. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my decision. I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds bigger, but still missing something. And plus, you know, layers could not be the secret to pro vocals because for every hit song out there that has a ton of vocal stacks and layers, you'll easily find another hit song that has no layers and backups whatsoever. So that is clearly not the secret. You're probably noticing that the level of this lead vocal we have is inconsistent, right? It's in and out. It's hard to hear every word that he's saying. So let's try using automation to fix that and see if that's the secret. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll But I guess if you never But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. But I guess But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. Tell me, I'll never know. 
All right, it's a little better. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. Let's mute the layer so we can hear it a little better. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. It's more even. I can I can hear the words more equally now, but it's still missing a sound. It doesn't have that vibe and character that you hear on pro records. So the secret to a pro vocal sound is not EQ, it's not reverb, it's not a bunch of layers, and it's not automation. Now, all of these things are super important. They're all ingredients of the vocal mix, but as you can hear, it still doesn't sound like a pro record. And I went through all of this trial and error when I was trying to figure this out, but what the secret really is, is compression. Lots and lots of compression, way more than you think. All right, check this out. Let's add some compression to what we have here. I'm gonna go for the CLA 76 from Waves. This is probably my favorite vocal compressor. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know On that I face my decision It instantly sounds more like a real record. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know and even if we get rid of some of the other things we try, the EQ, the reverb, the automation. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. Still sounds more like a finished record than all of those other things did combined. And now that you know this and you've heard it here, go and listen to a bunch of pro mixes and listen to that vocal and you'll start to hear how much compression is on there. And the, the one dead giveaway of that is when the breaths are as loud or louder than the actual words that they're singing. And this is not just about level control and dynamic control, this is about attitude and character and that's why you can't be shy with it. So let's dive back in here, let's bring back our EQ. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. Actually gonna have more compression than that. Let's add some Compression on the SSL channel here. Fast attack, fast release, after the EQ. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my decision. Cause I'm running around in circles, running along. But I'm running around in circles around you. Boom, there we go. Let me do a quick AB. I'm just gonna bypass both compressors here. Listen. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. Sounds pretty lame. Let's bring them both back in. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. On that I face my you can see that I'm not very shy with the amount of compression I'm using here. And you can't be shy with it because you don't start to get that attitude and that that pro vocal character unless you're pretty heavy with compression. And it's totally normal for me, if I'm tracking the vocal, I would use a distressor on the way in, probably hitting between six and 12 dB of gain reduction. Then in the mix, I'd have another couple on the SSL channel before I hit an 1176, which as you can see, I like to have pretty much pinned. That's where you start getting that feel and that vibe from the vocal. So that's like 20, 30 dB of compression or more. That's completely normal. Don't be afraid of that. What all this compression is doing is Number one, it's controlling the levels. You can hear every word more evenly. That's an obvious thing. But like I said, it's also affecting the character and energy of the vocal. So if we solo it out here, listen with this compressor in and out. So first bypass. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. In. But I guess if you never tell me, I'll never know. Do you hear how the attack of the words, like the, the start of the words and the consonants, it's like, it just hits so much harder. It makes it sound like he's singing with so much more energy. So it's doing that as well. And then thirdly, with all the gain reduction, it's bringing up all of the low level sounds, like the mouth sounds, the breaths, just every every little bit of tone and character and you know frequency response of that singer is being brought to the surface, which again, gives it more character, more uniqueness, more vibe, and it helps the vocal feel like it's really close up to the listener and that just connects way more deeply. Now, of course, you need to use your ears. In a softer song, a different genre, you might not use this much compression, but you would still need a healthy dose of it. But it's not unusual for me, like in a, in a song that maybe starts off really soft with just a vocal and a guitar or something, I would actually automate the compression so that there's less in the beginning where it's really stripped back. And then as the arrangement builds and the song gets more dense, we actually crank up the compression so the energy of the vocal 
matches the rest of the music. But even in softer sections, I mean, look at this verse. I've got to say what's on my heart, and it's you. Even a lot of compression on that pretty mellow vocal sounding great. So there it is. If I had to narrow it down to the one thing that makes that pro vocal sound happen, it's compression. That's what you're hearing on hit records mixed by the pros. If compression is confusing to you, if you find it hard to understand or hear what it's really doing, you know, I totally get it. It's, it's one of the harder things to grasp in mixing, but it's so, so important. So I have an in-depth tutorial on compression for you. It's gonna help you finally understand what compression is and really help you start to hear what it's doing and hear the difference that different attack and release times and ratios make. So if you wanna go deeper with compression, check out this in-depth tutorial right over here.